All right. A very good day to India. Um, I'm very glad to host you today on our webinar on how to study in Germany and how to apply to a, a German university and how to get admission into uh, one of those bachelor and master courses at a public German university without having ILTS. My name is Kai Fiedler and I'm uh, broadcasting live here from Germany's capital Berlin. Once again, a very good day and welcome to our today's webinar. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we would start with a short introduction about my organization, BSK International. BSK International um, has a history of close to 20 years. We are operating for uh, almost 20 years since, 2000, since the year 2000. We are an official partner of the German Cooperation uh, Society, which is an official body um, assigned by um, the German Ministry of Economic Development. Also, we are a supporting body of the Munich University Society. This basically is the uh, promoting society um, for University Munich, and we are helping to uh, foster uh, research and study in um, the um, Munich University. Well, our headquarter is located in the capital of Germany, in Berlin. We are located right opposite of Humboldt University. You surely have heard about this is one of uh, Alexander von Humboldt was one of the leading scholars and scientists at his time. And he founded that university and um, thanks um, and the name Humboldt University uh, derives from him. Well, um, talking about um, as an Indian student, talking about going into German universities, uh, you also always have to talk about and to have a look at the uh, uh, relationships between those And cooperation, and I personally believe this is a very, um, a, a very clear statement he gave, and it also shows the current state of the relation of our both countries, and they are in excellent um, state currently. And I'm saying that because um, we have a lot of businesses, German businesses in Western India, and we also have a lot of Indian business in Western Germany, and all these create lots of employment opportunities for you, for you as Indian graduates who have um, uh, finished the schooling time and maybe the bachelor degree in India and who have topped up with an academic degree from a German university and all these companies, let it be German companies in India or Indian companies in Germany, they are in high demand of um, graduates and of students like you. So you can also say that once you have graduated from a German university, the future is yours. You do not have to worry about future employment. BSK International has been operating in India for more than seven years. We started our operations in India in 2012. And since then, we have had a very fruitful and very friendly cooperation with India. And um, so far, um, a huge number of Indian students um, has enrolled to German University, successfully enrolled. Uh, most of them currently are studying in, in world-class uh, universities, including TU9 universities. TU9 universities is an approbation for technical university, TU. Technical University 9, that means 
the nine leading technical universities in Germany. And here you have like um, Technical University of Munich, uh, Technical University of Berlin, RWTH Aachen, um, Technical University of Braunschweig, Hanover, and so on. Altogether, nine universities. And the TU9 can be, in, in some ways, can be um, compared to what is IIT in India. So now here on the screen, you can see three of our um, testimonials. Um, you can also log on our homepage to read the very detailed um, testimonials and reviews of our former students. Here on the screen, um, you can see a few um, admission letters we have um, obtained for our students. All these are from the TU9 universities, what I just have said, the, nine, with the alliance of the nine leading uh, universities. For example, here you can see um, admission letters from um, Technical University Munich, from RWTH Aachen, and from Technical University Berlin. Just to give you an idea how your future admission letter might look like. Would, might look like. Here you find further admission uh, letters from uh, Technical University St Darmstadt, um, University of Stuttgart down in the south of Germany, as well as University of Hanover, uh, which is a very popular university amongst international students and especially amongst Indian students. Now here you find um, an admission letter from Technical University Munich. I personally would say that Technical University Munich is one of the uh, leading universities, not only in Germany, but on um, a worldwide scale. They are leading in teaching and research. And here you can see that um, this uh, admission letter was obtained by us for one of our Indian students. Um, just to give you an idea here on the right side, you will find the address and the logo of Technical University Berlin. On the left side, um, you can see this admission letter was addressed to us to BSK International in Berlin, Germany. And here you can see that this admission letter is actually for the master course chemical engineering, chemical engineering master course in Technical University Munich. Well, and if you enroll, maybe in the future you will receive that very same or a similar um, admission letter from Technical University Munich or any other TU9 universities. Now we would like to have a look at German public universities in, uh, in general. Um, Currently, we have close to uh, 400 um, universities in Germany, 376 universities to be, uh, to be precise. And all these public universities, they operate on a non-profit charge. There are no tuition fees for international students. International students who would like to study in Germany are accepted from any tuition fees there will be no tuition fees. And this is, um, I would say, a very big uh, difference to, um, let's say, universities from Anglo, phone countries, like, for example, USA, like, for example, uh, UK, like, for example, Australia, where these universities actually, they go to India and they regard India as the market, as a source for customers, for students, for customers, paying their tuition fees, and actually for them it's a business. But in Germany, actually we don't talk, we don't use the word business or customer in that regard because there is no business. There are no customers when it comes to higher education, when it comes to university, because we operate on a non-profit charge. Um, the only fees students have to pay is a very nominal charge, uh, let's say 100 to 200 euro per semester. And um, these 100 to 200 euro uh, on average per semester already 
is including the public transport ticket. That means um, with that ticket, you can use all the public transportation uh, in your state free of charge. Let's say, for example, you are enrolled in uh, Technical University Munich. Technical University Munich, here we have it. And then you pay the um, you, pay, you pay your um, uh, registration fee, which is, which is around 100 to 200 euro, and then you are entitled to use uh, the public transport in Munich, buses, subways, etc., free of charge. So um, that is the reason why we never talk about uh, clients or markets or business when it comes to higher education. Um, when German universities are looking at India, um, we always look and we understand India as the origin of the global elite of foreign students, of high talented uh, foreign students, and we hope that these students can come to our university. And we hope and we wish that students after their graduations can stay in Germany. I will talk about this in a very few seconds um, about what comes after your graduation, after you have finished your study in Germany, and about our wish that you stay in Germany, but more about that in a very few seconds. Now first have a look at German large uh, corporations like, for example, uh, Siemens, BMW, uh, Volkswagen, BASF, a chemical company, and so on. Um, German universities, basically, they have the assignment to foster and educate international students. And um, we would like to foster the global elite of international students. So you can say it is quite challenging to get into a public university. They have a very high entrance burden, but in return, they grant you a world-class teaching and research environment and excellent career opportunities after your graduation. And um, you can say that um, German universities, they don't charge any tuition fees, but they, they have the assignment to foster students who are in direct and indirect service of the German uh, businesses and German industry overall. Now, I mean by saying direct and indirect um, in service for the German industry, it is like that, um, uh, let's say you graduate from a German university and you start with Bosch or with Siemens in India. That is you being in direct service for those businesses. But we also have seen cases where students studying in Germany, they graduate, they stay in Germany or they go back to India or they go to a third party country like, for example, USA or Australia. They do not work for German companies actually, but they work in for other businesses, for other companies and in other areas. But thanks to their experience in Germany, they will buy German products or German machines and so on. And being that, and, and that can be can be regarded in uh, as being an indirect service for the German industry. And German universities, they have actually this assignment to foster students who are in direct and in indirect service for uh, German businesses. So you can also say Germany are always is only selling its product, but it's never selling its education. And that might be very different to um, other countries um, who are charging tuition fees. They are actually selling their education, but uh, we are never selling education. We only sell our product, our cars, BMW, Volkswagen, um, our mechanical products from Siemens, from Bosch, um, and so on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to talk about the second topic. What comes after your graduation? I just, uh, a very few seconds before, I gave you a clue about that. Um, our wish and our hope is that Indian students, after their graduation in Germany, actually they can stay in Germany. That is our hope and that is our wish. Although we know we cannot, we cannot force you, we cannot require it. If you would like to go back 
after you graduate in Germany, or if you would like to move to another country, of course, that is your freedom, that is your choice, that's fine. But our wish and our hope is that you can stay in Germany and take up employment after graduation. And here comes the good news. Now we have excellent career and employment opportunities for Indian students. And that is also thanks to a new, relatively new um, regulation, which is called the so-called blue card. In USA, we have the green card. In Europe, we have the so-called blue card. And this blue card basically gives you the right to settle down and to take up employment, not only in Germany, but all over the European Union, for example, in Austria, for example, in France, for example, in Italy, for example, in the Netherlands. And this blue card is not only for you, but it's also for your spouse, if you have one, or your kids. So basically, you enter a family, can settle down in Europe, can take up employment. And there's another benefit of that uh, blue card is that the minimum wage is protected by law. And currently, there we have a threshold of around 40. 5,000 euro per, uh, per year. That is the minimum which is required by law to be paid to blue card holders. Now, we have that law because uh, we would like to protect international talents and international uh, employees working in Germany to protect them from being exploited, for example, by their employers and so on. So, by law, the minimum is around 45,000 euro. But I can tell you, uh, currently we have a huge labor shortage um, in certain industries. So the wage normally is much higher than what is required by law. So if you have graduated, you can expect much higher loss than 45,000 euro actually. All right. When before the blue cards, um, we would like to go one step back, um, talking about the visa regulations. Once you are enrolled in a German university, that is basically the first phase of your staying in Germany, of course, you will be staying on a student visa, no question on that. Once you have graduated, normally you will not immediately receive a blue card, but what you will receive is a so-called job-seeking visa. Job-seeking visa. And that visa is valid for 18 months, one, one and a half years, six, 18 months. And within these 18 months, um, you can stay in Germany in order to find a job. Once you have found a job, once all the labor contract has been signed and all the formalities have been done, then you'll be granted a blue card and this blue card basically um, gives you the right to settle down and to work. So basically you have three steps. First is being in university, you are holding a student visa. Secondly, you graduate, you will be granted a job seeking visa, 18 months. Number three, you will be granted a so-called blue card, enabling you and your spouse and your kids, your children if you have one, uh, to settle down in Germany and the European Union. So um, you can say that uh, we really have opened up, we are welcoming international students, we are welcoming international graduates, and we hope and we wish that you can stay in Germany after graduation. And from, from what I just have told you, they are excellent career and um, income opportunities in Germany after your graduation. All right, now um, we would like to look at the three uh, programs which are available at BSK International for Indian students. That is, um, if you have graduated from India from 12th, from middle school, all right, you can be admitted um, by our so-called fast track program. In that program, first you have to undergo one year of so-called freshman course in Germany and afterwards you will be admitted into a bachelor course at a public university. 
Number two is if you are a graduate from a Indian university, that means if you're already holding an Indian bachelor degree, you can enroll to our second course and that is um, our master program. That means um, after you have cleared your language knowledge, your language lesson, your, excuse me, your, your language um, examination, and then you are entitled to enroll to any uh, or to your designated master course in uh, in a German public university. So bachelor course from India, bachelor degree from India, and you continue with a master course in Germany. Number three is also for graduates from the 12th, and this is a very um, special program. I would call it a very typical German program, and this is a so-called dual study, a dual study. And dual study basically is where um, a university together with a company are uh, jointly fostering and educating the student. So um, it is like, you can say it's like a triangle, student, university, and a company. Um, this is a bachelor program, um, has a duration of seven semesters, three and a half years. You are studying and you're doing an internship in the company at the same time, company and university. And this, of course, is a very challenging program, but of course, in return, you got excellent um, benefits. That is number one, no tuition fees, of course. Number two, you will receive a monthly salary. Uh, it will be 800 euro per month in the first year, 900 euro per month in the second year, and 1,000 euro in the third year. 800, 900, 1,000 euro. On top of that, meals and accommodation will be founded by your employer, by the company. That means you don't have to pay for tuition, you don't have to pay for accommodation, you don't have to pay for your meals, and additionally, you will receive a monthly salary. This is a very challenging program uh, because you're studying and doing internship at the same time, but um, it is a very popular program um, because it is highly attractive. On top of that, um, once you have graduated, um, you have excellent career opportunities, most of our students, they stay with that employer and right after your graduation, the, next, the very next day, normally, you will be fully employed and you receive your blue card immediately. So um, these are our uh, three programs for our 12th graduates from India. You can choose between the fast track program and the dual study bachelor program. And for our bachelor graduates from India, you can opt for our master program in Germany. So um, here I would like to give you a few more information about the fast track program. It is for graduates from 12th in India. Um, it is a very challenging program. I would like to be very frank on that. Um, it is um, an extremely high learning pace. It is a high density of information. Um, it is very intensive um, uh, and a very challenging program. So I would say um, if you are a slow or if, if a student is a slow learner or can only learn at average speed, that might be not the right program. Um, it is very challenging, but in return, um, as the name says, fast track program you will get into bachelor course very fast. Um, you will receive 200 lessons of German course. You will um, have one term, that means half a year, six months of freshman course only. Normally it is 12 months, one year, but it will be comprised, comprised and will be um, shortened to one term only, six months, one semester, and afterwards you can go into your bachelor course. So it's very intensive, it is very challenging, but you will save a lot of time. Um, 
These are a few ideas and information for our bachelor graduates from India. Um, it is um, if you are holding an Indian bachelor degree, that is the right uh, program for you. And you are aiming at becoming a specialist or executive um, working in the uh, Indian German field. Um, you can be um, enrolled if um, certain uh, conditions are fulfilled and if you have the right marks, you can be admitted into two nine universities. Um, of course, we have to have a look into every um, uh, individual case. Um, there will be an assessment on your marks, on your universities, on your overall academic performance. But if all these uh, criteria are in place, then you can apply for uh, TO9 um, University. Um, a big advantage is that only a very basic German knowledge is, um, uh, is required in India um, because the, the major part of the German language course uh, will be done in Germany. After your graduation, you are a you will be um, uh, receiving a master degree, which will be recognized basically all over the world. You can take up employment, or if you would like to, you can continue with a PhD afterwards. But this, again, this is only optional, only if you would like to do so. All right, here are a few more ideas about the dual bachelor program, what I just told you before. Um, this is basically um, a you will do your study university together with a company in this case together with um, in, in hospitality in hotels and here we have an alliance of over 70 luxury um, hotels um, which are very well into the market since more than 40 years with highly diversified portfolios let it be fine dining spa gold Etc. So basically, we are talking about top notch four, five, or even six stars hotels um, where you will do your internship. And as I just told you, there are no tuition fees. It is very challenging. You can see here um, uh, because we are serving a very international uh, clientele and customer base in those hotels. Those hotels are. Um, extremely expensive and they expect their students to be um, as well outstanding. You have to shoulder your study and your internship at the same time. But in return, you will be granted with excellent um, yeah, benefits, that is no tuition fees. And these are, you can see it here, um, the monthly salaries, 800 euro, 900 euro and 1000 euro per month. Um, on top of that, meals are provided, accommodations are uh, provided too. All right, um, I'm very sorry for those technical issues. Um, what I just forgot to mention, 50% of the social insurance and health insurance will be covered 
by your employer as well. So that is another additional benefit. Okay, and um, lastly, I would like, like to talk about two points. Uh, number one is our um, so-called embedded system. Embedded system means that we take care of every single aspect of um, your preparation, getting into university and getting into Germany as well. And this aspect starts from the time you apply in India um, until all the way until your graduation in Germany. So basically we are offering a service range of three to six years because it starts on the very day when you end the program and we are in your service until the day of your graduation in Germany. So you see it's quite a long time, three to six years. Um, it is also called a better system because all these different steps um, with the application, opening a block account you know, with the German financial institution, uh, doing the language course, going into university, um, finding a proper place of accommodation, um, finding the right insurance, um, making sure that your credits from India will be recognized in Germany, making sure that you will obtain the job signal visa, making sure that you will receive the blue card, etc. All these different steps cannot be divided, they, can, they cannot be, you know, singly treated. All these different steps are interacting with, with each, each other and for that reason it is called that embedded system because we make sure that is a one-stop solution for you. Basically you can say uh, my philosophy is you study, we take care of the rest. You study, we take care of the rest. That is mine and that is our philosophy and um, um, we um, uh, assist you uh, starting the time you stood in India going all the way um, until the time you arrive in Germany and you study and you graduate in Germany and this brings us to the second point the language course the language problem um, I, a lot of students, they will ask me, well, um, I would like to study in Germany, but, but studying German is, is such a hard task and uh, I only can speak English. I have never studied German. Well, let me tell you, that is no problem. Studying German is also not as difficult as it might appear. Um, you from India have a big head start compared to students, let's say, from, for example, Korea or Japan, because you are using the alphabet, A, B, Z, etc. already. And naturally, uh, German language is the same alphabet like the English one, so there you have a big head start. Number two, um, you are gaining um, a second advantage. If you are, you speak your mother tongue, like uh, Hindi, for example, and other Indian languages, plus English. And on top of that, you speak German. Now, then you master three or four even more languages, and that makes you very appealing to future employers. Um, so don't um, overestimate the burden uh, to study the language. Actually, in the long run, it will give you a lot of benefit. Uh, secondly, is um, I would like to share a number with you, is that 25% of our students in Germany are from abroad. 25%, that means one out of four students does not hail from a German-speaking country. They come from USA, Japan, Korea, India, South America, Brazil, from all over the world. And those students, they have one thing in common with you, and that is their mother tongue is not German as well. So how can we manage that 25% of our students actually are uh, international students? Um, there is a very certain system behind it. And that says that 200 lessons of German should be done in your home country, in India in that case, 200 lessons, more about, rather about 200 lessons. 
and the remaining 500 to 1000 lessons will be done in Germany, that means in a German speaking environment. Um, that is because here is a so-called 3 to 1 ratio. And this 3 to 1 ratio basically says that um, one lesson of German in a German speaking environment, in Germany, for example, equals to three lessons of German in a non German speaking environment, for example, in India. So basically, one lesson of German in Germany equals three lessons of German in India. And if you go by that system, 200 lessons in your home country plus 500 to 1000 lessons in Germany, then you will master this system, you will end up with so-called test dev or DSH, test dev or DSH examination that is like TOEFL or ILTS. And once you have cleared that examination, um, you can enroll um, to, um, to public universities. So um, my message is don't be afraid of learning the language. Actually, it will give you, it will give you a lot of benefits 200 lessons roundabout in India, 500 to 1,000 lessons in Germany roundabout, then clear test DEF or DSH examination, and then you are fulfilling the entire um, admission requirements for German universities. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for your attention. And now um, I am very happy to answer your questions, please. Thank you. So if you have any questions, please feel free to type them on the right side of your screen in your GoToWebinar panel. Please type in your questions and I will be very happy to answer them. Thank you. Is can NIOS, N I L S students get admission in German universities? Please kindly, I have to ask for your help. Please kindly help me. What is N I L S? Please explain what is N I L S. Thank you. Okay, please be kind enough and please explain what is the abbreviation for NIOS. have any other questions please come up with your questions please I will be happy to answer your questions well I would like um, to make use of this time and talk about the scope of hotel management in Germany um, if First of all, um, the, the bachelor course, the dual study course, um, will be done in um, in one of um, yeah, in one of the seven over seventy different luxurious hotels. So these are really not hotels. Once you have graduated from uh, from the program, which is three and a half years, you can start employment in 
hotels, but also overall over the whole hospitality industry. Um, income, income and job opportunities are excellent, and you can expect, depending on a position, you can expect around uh, 35,000 euros up to 50 or 60,000 euro. 35,000 up to 50 to 60,000 euro per year. Well, here comes the next question. Um, the question is, I have ILTS 7.0, I have ILTS 7. Will it be sufficient to get enrolled into a tier 9 university? Well, um, ILTS um, 7.0 uh, is an excellent score. Um, this, that will definitely help you uh, when it comes to studying, when it comes to help to, to, to find a job. But um, you still will have to master the German language as I just say, it's not a burden, it's basically a second advantage for you if you, um, if you have mastered the English language, which you, which you definitely have with ILTS 7, and on top of that, you have a um, German certificate like DSH or TESTA, then you will be very um, attractive for the labor market. So um, answering your questions, ILTS 7 is, um, is excellent. This is um, a, a, a very good position you are in, but you still will have to clear the German examination, which is tested for um, DSH. Okay, question is, can you help us to get admissions? Of course we can. Um, we do guarantee. Um, we do guarantee that students will get admission into public universities. We can give this guarantee because in the very first step, you enroll to go study free the calculus. They will forward the documents to us. We will do a screening at, um, and uh, of all those, those documents. And once um, you uh, pass that screening we can guarantee that you will be admitted into a public university. So here comes the next question. Is aerospace engineering in high demand in Germany? Is there a high demand for aerospace engineering? Well, definitely, yes. Um, now, nowadays, we have a huge demand for all kinds of engineers, including um, aerospace engineering, but also mechanical engineering, automotive uh, engineering, and so on. So um, coming back to your questions, if you would like to study um, aerospace engineering, definitely I can encourage you to apply because you will have excellent uh, job opportunities. Okay, here comes the next question. Um, uh, as I said in my presentation, it is a very tough process to get into TU9 University for um, uh, enrolling to a master course. Um, this procedure appears to be very tough. So what is the procedure? Um, well, basically the procedure is that um, you send us your documents, you submit your documents to go study free the calculus they will forward those documents to us. We will make a screening of your documents and we can evaluate if you are eligible for a TU9 university or not. Once we can, once the result of our evaluation is that you are eligible for a TU9 university, um, we will guarantee that you can be admitted. Um, you will receive um, the, the needed paperwork. Um, you then will apply for a visa go for a language course. And once you have cleared that DSH or TESTA, the German language examination, the German profile, language proficiency test, once you have cleared that test, you will be admitted into a master course at T9 University in that case. Well, uh, here comes the next question. I have around 
98 to 92% in GATE. Do I have a good chance to get into tier 9 universities? I have around 90% of GATE. Can I get into a tier 9 university? I would say yes, you have um, a good chances. Of course, there's still um, GATE is, is very good. It puts you in a very good position, but that's not everything. There are still um, other obstacles we have to overcome. Um, also the language problem we have to solve, but this definitely is a very good um, head start for you. And I would say you have um, excellent chances uh, to get into one of those uh, T9 university. Next question, is TOEFL accepted in Germany? Well, yes, TOEFL, of course, it accept is TOEFL test is accepted all over the world, including Germany. However, um, uh, TOEFL is excellent, but still um, you have to pass the um, uh, German um, language proficiency test, tester or DSH. Um, and um, this is for several reasons. One, it is the, the, the vast majority, there are some English taught programs in German universities, but it's only a minority. I would say the vast majority, I would say um, more than 95% of all courses are still conducted in German language. And for that reason, you still would need to have a uh, the German language proficiency test. Number two is um, you're staying in Germany for at least two, three, four, even more years. You have to you have to live your life. You have to communicate with your landlord, with your colleagues, with your students, with everybody around you. You would like to laugh. You would like to to to, to master the language at least to a certain degree that you can communicate and you can and you can understand what is going around you. So um, also, that is a very practical uh, point of view. Um, speaking the language will help you to ease in and to blend in into society. Number three, uh, when it comes to job and business opportunities, of course, if you master the language, you will have much better um, career and uh, business opportunities than if you don't speak the local language. So my advice is um, don't be afraid of that burden. Of the, of, of, of the uh, obstacle to, to learn the language, actually it will give you a lot of benefits in the long run. Okay, here comes the next question. What are the job prospects for aerospace engineers? What are the job prospects for, en for en aerospace engineering? Well, a wide range. This is of course, um, you can work for these very classical um, aircraft manufacturers like, for example, Boeing or Airbus. Um, you can also work for these suppliers of those companies. Now, maybe you know in Germany we have a lot of um, small and, or medium sized companies with several hundred or some thousands of employees. They are called hidden champions. And these hidden champions are. Um, they produce very special spare parts for aerospace and for um, aircrafts, and they are delivering to those big companies like Airbus and, um, and Boeing. And um, actually, uh, job opportunities either in those big companies, Boeing and, and uh, Airbus, and in those suppliers, which we call hidden champions, um, there are plenty of opportunities. And payment, of course, is very well. By the way, most of those um, suppliers for aircraft engineering and aircraft um, technology are in the south of Germany, around the Munich area. That is the biggest and also the most um, prospering and richest um, federal state uh, in Germany. So here, this is a very nice, a very good question. I have C1 from Goethe Institute in India. Do I still have to give DSH examination? I already have C1 from Goethe. Do I have still, do I still have to give the DSH? Now, here comes the point. C1 in Goethe is perfectly fine. It is a very good certificate. 
it might be recognized. It might be recognized by a few universities. However, I've heard cases where this is not recognized by German universities for uh, several numbers of reasons, and they will, will require that you sit DSH again. So at this point, um, C1 from Goethe is excellent, is good, but um, I'm sorry to say that um, there might be a few universities uh, who do not recognize that um, certificate. Well, here we have the next uh, comment. I have B2 level certificate in German language already. I have B2 German already. Well, also, that is very good. It gives you a very good, you're an excellent position. That gives you a very good head start. My advice is if you have B2 already, um, do the procedures, obtain for a visa, go to Germany. Um, do the remaining language course in Germany and finish with DSH or TESTF and then um, you are and then you can get admission into university. If you have if you have in B2 already, that of course is a big help um, for you and it will shorten the the entire time of the procedure. Okay, here's the next question regarding business science and management program. Um, the question is, uh, do I have to have work experience for an MBA program and are there, many, are there any management programs available? Well, definitely, yes. Um, we have um, a, a, a wide range of different business science and management courses on the bachelor and the master level in Germany. If you would like to apply for an MBA, yes, normally you will have to be in possession of, um, uh, of, uh, of, of, of previous working experience. If you would like to apply for management program on the bachelor level, my advice is to apply for our hotel management program with the dual program, with, which actually is a management program for the bachelor level. So that is my advice. If if you are a 12th grader aide and if you would like to go into business science or management science, then my advice is apply to um, our dual uh, our dual bachelor study course. <clears throat> in T9 University, can we pursue our master in English course in English language? So are there any English instructed master courses in T9 universities? Yes, there are. Um, however, it's a very limited number. I would say 95% or more of those courses are conducted in German. So um, still you will need to clear the German language course before you can enroll into a T9 master course. Okay, next question. What are the job opportunities for mechanical engineers in small cities? What are the career opportunities for mechanical engineers in small cities? Well, this maybe might be different. I'm not very sure about the situation in India, but it might be different from India, um, where, um, according to my understanding, most of the big companies and most of the wells is concentrated in big cities like Delhi or Mumbai. And in Germany, we have a little bit different picture where um, the countryside or the small cities are at least of the same wells and the same prosperity um, as the big cities. In fact, the countryside is even richer than the cities in, in some parts. And we have a lot of uh, small and medium-sized companies, so-called hidden champions in small cities. So um, if you are a mechanical engineer and if you would like to pursue your career in a small city, actually it's a good thing 
sometimes or most of the cases um, the, the salaries in small cities are even higher than in the bigger cities um, just because um, these companies in small cities they're desperate for skilled labor force so if you are a technical engineer if you would like to work in a small city in germany definitely that is going to be work that is going to be successful and i definitely can encourage you to do that all right next question is a very um, professional question um, is it better to give DEF, test DEF, or dsh examination what is better test DEF or dsh um, well it's hard to say um, i would say that um, um, DSH, both, first of all, both um, examinations are of equal authority. They're equally recognized all over Germany. For TESTA, you will only have two trials. If you fail more than two trials, you will be out. Uh, with TESTA, you have an unlimited number of, um, uh, of, of trials. So that means no matter how often you fail, um, you still can continue to uh, to continue uh, to take the test. From our experience, Indian students, they do slightly better with test dev compared to DSH. Um, besides that, I would like to give you an information is that now we have a third um, uh, examination which is recognized between test dev and DSH. It is called TELC, T-E-L-C, TELC. And TELC turned out to be very um, popular among international students, especially Indian students. So uh, basically, you will have uh, three options, test DEF, DSH, and TELC. And um, the choice is yours. But I can say you should also have a focus on TELC, because TELC appears to be very popular, and is of equal authority, and it is recognized all at all German universities. <clears throat> well, our next question, are all the public universities are equally good? Um, in Germany, we don't have any um, ranking like we have in the US or in UK, number one, two, three, four, five, uh, by the universities. We go by the subjects. Um, to give you one example, RWTH Aachen, uh, which is a T9 member university. They are, of course, excellent. They're number one when it comes to technical courses and to engineering courses. They're number one. But the same university, RTWR, when it comes to business science, you cannot say they are bad in business science. But, you know, they're not ranking the first, they're only in the middle or, you know, more, more in the, you know, uh, you know lower uh, classes. And so from here, you can see it really depends on the subject. You cannot say this university is good, that university is bad. You have to look at the major, the course. So you can say um, engineering and technical courses at RTLW are number one. You can say business courses and legal courses at Munich University are number one. So um, when to answer your questions, um, are they equally good? I would say yes, but it depends on the course. So never go by the university, always go by the course or by the major. All right, next question is regarding the money. What is the average living cost in Germany per year? Well, you can say average living cost is per month is around 500 to 600 euro per month. So in a year, that will be some up to some five, six, six thousand euro, six to eight thousand euro um, per year. But talking about the living cost, you also we also have to talk about one big thing, and that is um, your part-time working opportunities. Every international student is allowed to do part-time jobs, and this is also um, a very I would call it a very clean, legalized space. That means your um, part-time working permit will be printed right into your passport. That means your passport will hold a working permit. Um, so you are legally 
um, a title to do part-time jobs. You have to sign a labor contract. You will have to pay taxes. In the end of the year, you will get a tax return and so on. Everything is crystal clear. Everything is on paper. Um, everything goes by law. There is no such thing like legal employment or black employment for that. Um, you will grant it a minimum law. Um, a minimum wage by law is 8.5 euro per hour. That is the minimum wage um, uh, set by the um, set by law uh, by the labor protection laws. So um, I'm saying that because these living costs, like um, uh, five to six hundred euro per month, can easily be earned by doing part-time jobs. <clears throat> So these are all questions. If you have any more questions, please come forward with your questions and I will be very happy to answer them. Do we have any more questions, please? very much ladies and gentlemen uh, for your attention for um, attending this webinar it was a big pleasure hosting you and um, hope to see you very soon in Germany wish you all the best for any questions please never hesitate to contact us or go study free the calculus the calculus and go study free um, is a very experienced organization for um, the academic exchange between India and Germany with a history of more than three decades. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to turn to one of the dedicated team members. Thank you again and hope to see you very soon in Germany. Thank you and goodbye.